in the previous videos we have seen the functions of an ecosystem we have seen three functions of an ecosystem now in this lecture we are going to see the fourth function of an ecosystem okay that is nothing but the nutrient cycles okay uh, we all know that every organisms needs a constant supply of a nutrients lifetime that means every organism needs nutrients for to survive okay there are many more reasons for the need of uh, the nutrients that is it may be for the reproduction it may be for the uh, growing purpose okay it ne they needs some of the nutrients okay and it should be continuous constantly it should be provided to an organism to survive okay so we are going to study that nutrient cycle cycle of that nutrients okay now generally the nutrients uh, present in the soil are like that uh, carbon there may be phosphorus okay calcium okay and nitrogen these are some of the examples of the nutrients present in the soil and in the atmosphere so these nutrients cannot be eliminated or lost from the ecosystem that means the carbon phosphorus calcium it is not eliminated or lost from the ecosystem it is going to recycling again and again that means carbon uh, used at once it is going to the next organism then again to the next organism and by recycling it again comes to that same organism and it is not going to lost from that ecosystem so generally nutrients are not going to lost from the ecosystem it is going to recycling again and again now what is the meaning of nutrient cycles okay the moment of an nutrient elements the moment of an nutrient elements in the all organisms of an ecosystem this is called as the nutrient cycle that means the nutrient elements it is going to transfer from organism to organism in an ecosystem and it is it comes again to that same organism so the cycling of that nutrient elements in an ecosystem in an each component of an ecosystem it is called as nutrient cycling or it is also called as biogeological cycle okay now there are mainly two types of the nutrient cycles okay uh, one is the gaseous type of nutrient cycle and second is nothing but the sedimentary type of nutrient cycle now the gaseous type of nutrient cycles in that reservoirs are nothing but the atmosphere all gases are present in the atmosphere so the reservoir is atmosphere for example nutrient cycle of gaseous type of nutrient cycle examples are there are nitrogen carbon cycle is there carbon cycle and nitrogen cycles are the two examples and many more okay so this is the gaseous type of nutrient cycle now coming to the second that is sedimentary type of nutrient cycle sedimentary type of nutrient cycle the reservoir for that it is nothing but the earth crust okay and the example for the sedimentary type of uh, nutrient cycle it is phosphorus cycle so these two types of the nutrient cycle we are going to study in this lecture uh, we are going to take one example from each type that means in the gaseous uh, nutrient cycle we are going to take the example of carbon cycle and from the sedimentary type of uh, nutrient cycle we are going to take the phosphorus cycle so we will see the both the cycles of gaseous and sedimentary okay first uh, we will see the carbon cycle that is the type of gaseous 
nutrient cycle but we will see the carbon cycle now students you all know that carbon is the main component of all the life forms even in chemistry also every compound is made up of carbon carbon is the main component of every compound and in life forms also all enzymes proteins it is having carbon in their constitution so carbon is the main component of an living forms or living organism in uh, in case of organism the 49% of dry weight is of carbon in organism that means in entire organism 49% of the dry weight is of only carbon so think only that how much important and how much carbon is there in the living form so we are going to take such a cycle of a carbon okay and in the globe total carbon percentage is there out of that total carbon 71% of the carbon it is dissolved into the oceans okay that means in entire globe entire earth whatever the carbon content is there out of that all carbon content 71% of the carbon content it is going to dissolve into the oceans okay and remaining it is in on the earth okay that is very much important so the percentage of carbon into the atmosphere it is going to maintained sustained by the oceans that means it means what it means if there is increase in the atmospheric carbon then such increased carbon it is going to dissolve into the oceans and by that way the percentage of carbon in the atmosphere it is going to maintain so oceans are very much important to maintain the carbon content in the atmosphere again uh, mostly okay mostly the carbon content uh, it is present in the fossil fuels that means many of the percentage of an carbon it is present into the ocean uh, sorry into the fossil fuels or in the rocky areas okay fossil fuels we know that what are the fossil fuels we are using it day by day daily we are using the fossil fuels okay uh, like that of the oil coal okay and many more fossil fuels are there in that fossil fuels mostly the carbon content is more and by the that reservoir sources we are using carbon day by day and we are exploiting the carbon content we are using more and more carbon and we are polluting the nature okay this is the one important thing that is fossil fuels are the uh, major source of the carbon okay and where that fossil fuels are going to store such places are called as the sinks okay where the fossil fuels are stored and from where the human get the fossil fuels such a place it is called as the sinks okay uh, so uh, generally carbon where the carbon is present okay carbon it is present in the atmosphere in the fossil fuels okay in carbon uh, in sorry in the coal in the living forms in the plants okay carbon is present in most of the places okay we are going to study such a cycle of a carbon okay uh, you can see one picture on your screen it is nothing but the carbon cycle there is one picture in your textbook of carbon cycle okay this carbon cycle and that textbook carbon cycle it is nothing but the same but for your easy understanding we are using this type of chart so you can understand it is in the better way so uh, in this chart uh, 
you can see uh, many of the components in this carbon cycle carbon it is a cycle that means the carbon which is uh, entered it is going to travel and travel and again it comes to that same component so it is nothing but the cycling of that carbon takes place so in this picture you can see the different components okay now uh, we were, we are going to start with ourselves okay we are using most of the fossil fuels we are using most of the equipments from that carbon is going to eliminate okay first we will see uh, the entrance of the carbon in the atmosphere how the carbon it is going to enter into the atmosphere okay there are so many reasons okay human being is the most important reason to enter the carbon into the atmosphere okay uh, what are the ways for the entering of the uh, carbon into the atmosphere okay majorly one source is the carbon dioxide carbon is entered into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide okay and we know that it is the, uh, one of the pollutant okay and how it is going to enter there are many reasons you can see in the chart that is human respiration through the exhalation we are exhaling co2 and we are inhaling oxygen okay by that way co2 is entered into the atmosphere that is carbon in the atmosphere then uh, there are many more reasons that is nothing but the fuel consumption we are using vehicles motors okay and many more components through which fuel consumption is there then again forest fire okay there are lot of fires in the forest takes place through that the carbon is going to enter into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide then there are lot of industries in the city level so that from that industry lot of carbon dioxide it is going to uh, release into the atmosphere by using some uh, fossil fuels so there are many more reasons of release of co2 into the atmosphere okay using the uh, fire industries okay industries are there then uh, coal use of coal then human pollution okay by the pollution also the co2 is going to enter into the atmosphere so by that all activities the carbon it is in the form of co2 it is entered into atmosphere and it is called as atmospheric co2 okay now that atmospheric co2 okay now where it goes okay so uh, part of this atmospheric co2 it is going to dissolve into the sea water that means in the oceans we have already seen that uh, many percentage of that atmospheric co2 it is going to enter into the sea water or dissolved into the sea water now into that sea water this carbon what about that carbon okay when it is dissolved into the sea car uh, ocean then that carbon it is going to use to make the shells of the marine organisms you can see uh, many of the marine organisms they are having shells on their body that is made up of calcium carbonate and that calcium calcium carbonate is having carbon content so whatever the carbon it is dissolved into the oceans it will make calcium carbonate shells for the marine organisms now coming to the remaining uh, carbon content you know that every year 5.5 billion tons of carbon it is released into the atmosphere and out of that 3.3 billion tons of carbon it is remains in the atmosphere now remaining it is uh, dissolved into the oceans but 3.3 billion 
tons of carbon it is remains in the atmosphere now that co2 or that carbon it is used most of that it is used by the plants now from the atmosphere the carbon it is entering into the plants you can see uh, in this chart the plants from atmospheric co2 that is entering into the plants because plant use the co2 for the photosynthesis and by that way by that photosynthesis they are going to make their own food material with the help of the sun that is that means light energy so by that atmospheric co2 it is used by the plants for the food production so from atmosphere the co2 it is entering into the parts that is carbon it is entered into the plants now they, when there is a food production is there okay the plants are flowering flowering is there fruits are there now that carbon it is now entering into the animals because animals dependent on the plants for the food so when they are uh, used as a food that plants or that herbs or that vegetables then that carbon it is entered into the animal body now there is a carbon in animals also there is a carbon in plants also carbon content is there when it becomes a dead organic matter when there is a uh, death or death of an organism or there is a uh, dead death of an plants then such organic dead organic matters are there it is going to uh, furnish okay in such time there is a carbon content in that dead organic matter there is a carbon component in that dead organic matter then by using some of the decomposers now there is a function of a decomposer such a decomposers are going to convert that dead organic matter into the detritus okay and there is a carbon content that carbon content it is going to miscible or going to mixture into the soil and uh, by that decomposition the carbon is going to miscible into the soil and by leaching process that carbon content is going deeper and deeper into the soil and it is reaching up to the sinks where the fossil fuels are there and such a carbon it is entering again in the fossil fuels and by this fossil fuel is again used by the human and again by human consumption of that fuel it is again entering into the atmosphere so it is a cycle first we have seen by human use the fossil fuels the carbon is entered into the atmosphere from the atmosphere uh, percentage of it is going into the oceans and percentage of its it is entering into the plants by photosynthesis from the plants it goes into the animals from animals by decomposing it it is going into the soil and there are decomposers and by the leaching process it is again entering into the fossil fuels and again such fossil fuels are used by the human so it is a cycle carbon it is not eliminated from the ecosystem or it is not lost in the ecosystem it is used again and again in the ecosystem and it is very important nutrients to the all life form okay so this is about the carbon cycle uh, there is a many more uses of this carbon cycle it gave nutrients many of the compounds components are made of of that carbon compound in the next lecture uh, we are going to see the phosphorus cycle another important sedimentary type of nutrient cycle